Hello, my name is Kyle Vernon. I'm the developer of the Motorcycle Awareness Campaign's website. I'm going to show you how to add articles into the chapters, uh, not the national area, which is the front end, but the chapter area for each one of your individual chapters. The front end's the same at the bottom, but different at the top. It uses a module instead of the article metaphor. So uh, I'll go into a different program or a different tutorial on how to change that article. But for right now, we're, be, we're concerned about the chapters. So the first thing you're going to do is if you have access to make these articles, you're going to log in. The log in form is right here on the right hand side of the site down below and you'll just put in your username and password and click log in and that brings you to the inside of the site the only difference that you'll see here is that there's a login that says welcome your name add new item my page my account moderate comments to my published items now you'll use this moderate comments if people start making comments about your particular article and you'll want to go on ahead and make sure they're not putting any profane language on there or something like that then you'll click on that and moderate that particular comment um, but we're right now we're concerned about adding articles to the site so we're gonna click on add new item and a dialog box is going to show up. Now I want you to treat this dialog box like you would be, you know, basically sending a simple email. It works almost the same way, only you're sending it to the site's uh, framework. Basically, you have a title, which is your subject line, like if you were sending an email. So let's type in a title real quick. Now there's nothing else that you really have to do to this title to make it display any differently. It's going to display automatically as a title. It's guided by the CSS of the website. The cascading style sheet determines how each element of this website is going to display. What color, what size, how bold, what font, etc. So when you just put this in here, don't worry about anything else. All you're doing is putting in what the article is about. Just like you're sending a subject line to somebody, but you might want to make it look like an article. So, you know, some, if it's a news or an event, you're going to put that in there. Title alias right below it, you don't have to do anything. It's going to automatically fill with the title underneath. But what it's going to do is format it for a searchable index. It's going to make all the letters, all the words, lowercase. It's going to put a hyphen between them. That way, when the search engines start Googling or start spidering them, uh, it's going to make it easier for them to index. The tags below here is something that you may want to use. It helps the internal search engine search for the articles within the site by whatever tag you put in there. Say you're doing an article on motorcycles, you might want to put the motorcycle, the type of motorcycle, the name brand or whatever, or all of them within these tags. That way if somebody's on the front of the site and they search with any one of those words, your article or articles containing those words will show up. Right now we're going to leave it blank because we're just testing it. Published is uh, something that you will leave it yes to, it's, it's defaulted to yes. If you click on no and save it, you'll never see your changes on the front of the site. What it'll do is it'll put it in the list of articles and you'll have to go into the back of the site to publish it. So we're going to leave it on yes right now. You shouldn't be afraid to publish these things live like they are because you could always go back and unpublish them or go back and change them. It's not a difficult thing to do. Uh, and it's not a permanent thing. So there's nothing you could do on this part of the site to hurt the site at all. Okay, it says, is it featured? We leave that unchecked because we're not using the featured icon on any of our items. Uh, and underneath that is category. Now, on the front end of the site, when you log in, you will be told which category you can actually send your article to. Section for Baton Rouge Chapter is the only article that we have available for me because I set my account up for that. So with you, it'll be whatever the other chapter or whatever other section is available to you. So you're going to hit and select that. You have to select that so uh, it knows where to place this article. Now, we go to the content section of the site, and this is basically the same metaphor as if you're using WordPad or Notepad, or maybe your email program has some of these tools, and it's similar to what Word used to look like, but it's a standard uh, format for adding text and formatting it. And you see the, uh, the, the tabs that it has above it, we're going to leave those alone because those complicate things. They do function, and they do have a function on the site, but right now, we're going to make it as simple as possible. Since we're not using the image gallery through K2, and we're not using any the other features up there we're going to leave those tabs alone right now we're just going to go down here and put our cursor in here and type out some some article type text so
Okay, now as you see, as I was typing, some of the words that were misspelled, it had a little red underline underneath there. It's got a, a spell check on it that's automatic. Of course, spell check is not infallible, so you have to make sure uh, everything is spelled correctly and it's in the proper context. Uh, but it will do a spell check for you. Everything that's underlined with a red dotted line, you might want to go back and change and make sure it's right. Now, if we saved it right now, your article would show up with this is an article title with, as the main article title and the text that we just put in as the article. I didn't put too many lines in there because we're just testing this right now. All right, so we have an article. Now I'm going to show you how to add an image to this article. Uh, right down here in the bottom row, there's an icon right here with a little green on it, and that's the image insert and edit. So you're going to insert and edit image by clicking on this icon. Now this is the most powerful tool for adding ed images. You're going to ignore the ones in the tabs and the one below on the button. You don't need to use those at all. This is the only image manager that you need to use. So I'm going to go on ahead and open this up, and as you see, the dialog box is open. And it's a little bit different than probably some of the things that you've seen before, but we're going to go over this and make it fairly simple for you. Over here I have a folder called graphics. You probably want to keep everything within this folder. If you click on it, it'll, it'll list the folders over here. Now, I created a folder called Baton Rouge Images, but we're going to create a new folder just for you. I'm going to click on graphics again, make sure it's selected, and I'm going to click on this folder button right here, new folder. It's going to pop up something. I'm going to call this Baton Rouge article. I'm just doing this to show you how to make a folder. I could have used Baton Rouge Images. I could have named it something else. It doesn't make any difference. So at this point, I'm just showing you how to make a, a folder for your images. So I'll say OK. And down below here, you should have Baton Rouge article. It should be an empty folder. I'll go ahead and click on it. And you'll see it says no files right here. So we're going to add a file to it. And this is the file that we're going to put in our article. The second button right here is an upload button. I'm going to click on this, and it's going to give you another dialog box that says Upload. We're going to Add, and when you click on Add, it's going to browse your computer for images. Now, wherever you put the images on your computer, that's where you want to search for them. If they're on the desktop or in a folder on the desktop, look for them in the folder on the desktop. Right now, I'll put a picture called A Bonita on the desktop. It's right here. I'm going to go ahead and select it. And as you see, it puts it in the queue right here. And if you wanted to add 10 of them, you have to do that 10 times. Click on Add, select the image, and it'll add it. And then you do it again and again. You can't add multiple images at the same time, unfortunately. Okay, so it's in the queue. We're going to hit Upload. And there, it's uploaded to our site now. You can see the little check box with the little green circle around it, and we'll cancel that. As you can see, a bonita has been entered into the folder. You can see the picture preview over here. It's a picture of me holding a bonita. I used to do a lot of fishing. And go ahead and click on the bolded a bonita JPEG. And as you can see, when you click on it again, this top properties box is filled out. It's got the URL where the image is on the site and it has alternate text. You might want to change this something a little bit more relevant to people who don't look at images or who want to mouse over it and see exactly what it is. So I'm going to put webmaster catches Vanita. And this is also helpful when the search engines are indexing the site. Okay, you can see the dimensions of the image. We want to keep these images 1024 by 768 at 72 dpi or smaller. If you go too big with these images, it simply will not upload. And if you have a problem uploading, it's probably because your image is too big. Okay, you're going to look over here. And what we want to do to put the thumbnail on the front of the article, we don't want it at full size. We want it smaller. On our site, we want it at 150 pixels wide. So we're going to go ahead and change that long width. The, it's a horizontal picture. We're going to change the long width to 150 pixels. Okay, and it's proportional, so it's going to set itself proportionately. Uh, go down to align. When you click on it, you notice that the proportions did change. I'm going to go to the left. We want our pictures to set at the left. Now, if you look over here in the preview, you can see how this is sitting. You got the image here, and you got the text wrapping around it, but it's butted up against there, so we want some white space. With margin, we're going to go on ahead and add. 10 pixels around it. It's at equal value, so it's going to go on ahead and it's going to put it all the way around this image. If in order to act that, you're just going to click the next button and it'll automatically do it. And you see how it does it. It wraps that, that text around that, uh, that margin, which is around the image. <clears throat> now, I like the image to butt up against the top of the type line here, so it looks like it's mounted up flush. So I'm going to deselect equal values. I'm going to go to the top margin and make it zero. Now watch what it does over here. All right, it lines that text up with the line height of the it lines the image up with the line height of the text.
and I like it like that. So we go back to border, see the border width. You might want to add a border around the image to make it sit, uh, stand out on the page. So I'm going to give it a one inch, a one pixel border, solid, and I'm going to make it black. You click that last icon and you can make it black. There you go. See, that was width, solid, color. All right, and you see what it did. It's got a black border around it up here. Okay, and then you click on insert. And there it is on the site. Now, I did want to put this up here in this spot and not down at this spot. So you could select it and copy it, then delete it. And you put it where you want to, basically. If I had to put the, uh, put the cursor here to begin with, we'd, we'd have no problems. That's what I wanted it to look like. Okay, now if you want to make this pop up to the bigger image, and I know you do, you go ahead and select it, and it's blue. And you'll see that this icon highlights because it's an image, and this, highlight, this, this icon highlights because it allows you to make the pop-ups. The other ones highlight as well. You'll leave those alone. Go ahead and click on this third from the right icon. It says Insert or Modify High Slide Expander. All it is is a, a pop-up tool. And it's very easy to use. It opens up and you'll go on ahead below it. It'll pre-fill the thumbnail image, which is just a reduced size of the real image. And you'll copy that and put it up here to the pop-up image URL. And what it's going to do is it's going to pop up to the original size. So we'll go ahead and insert that. And it won't make any difference right here. It won't make any difference until you actually look at it on the site and click on it. Now, lastly, we're done with, we're done with the article. Lastly, we're going to make sure uh, we got the right name on there. Now, by default, whoever logs in, that's who the author is. Now, if you're getting an article from somebody else and you want to use their name instead, you'd put it here under alias. So we're going to put in John Doe. And that's what's going to show up as the author uh, after this is published. You want to keep the access level on public, and you have a creation date and a start publishing date. Now, if you wanted this to show up next month instead of this month, like you want to type up an article and you didn't want people to see it just yet, uh, you can put the start publishing date somewhere in the future. Creation date stays the same. Today is the day it was created. You can change it, but it doesn't make any sense to. All right, so we're ready to go. We got an article. Um, I didn't mention these buttons down here. You can leave those alone, by the way. I just wanted to point them out to you. And you're going to hit save. Okay, now the item is saved. It's got the little blue text up here. It says item saved. All the fields come back into play here. And if you want to change it, if you saw a typo or something, you could do it at this point. But right now, we're going to look at it on the front of the site. We'll go on ahead and cancel this because it won't close automatically in this portion. And we're going to go on ahead. I'm going to log out. Okay, and I'm going to go to the Baton Rouge area which is where I put the article and scroll up and there I am section for Baton Rouge chapter this is an article title written by John Doe the name that I put in there this is the picture that I put in it's got a 10, 10 uh, pixel border going around there and I'll go ahead and click on this and you can see how it expands and reduces the article is in place. All right, now that's how you add an article to the site. Now, from the front of the site, you can't really delete these articles, but you can unpublish them if you don't want them to be seen. So, But you'll have to go to the back of the site in order to republish them. But I'm going to log in and show you how to take them off of there just in case something on there really bothers you and you really have to take it off. Go ahead and log in like I just did. And you're going to go to the front of the Baton Rouge area again. Okay. And you'll see right here above it, right above the dotted line, it says edit item. That item is for that particular article. Like you see below here, there's another one. That item is for the Kids Safety Expo Cortana Mall article, which you can edit at any time um, if it's in your section. So I'll go ahead and click this edit item. And you see the item has shown up. And I'm going to go ahead and hit no and save. Now the item will disappear from this front page. But it'll remain in the database if you want to use that article later. But you have to go to the back end to find it. Cancel. Log out. Hit the Baton Rouge area again. And as you can see, the article is no longer displaying on the front of the site. It has been unpublished, but it's still in the database. Now, the next one I'll do, you can go to the back end and find it and, and republish it. But I'd like to thank you for looking at this tutorial. Hopefully you'll get this right, and if you have any questions, don't be afraid to give me a call.